Hi, I'm Sherilyn Darcy and I'm the author and the artist of the Australian Wildflower Reading Cards. This deck of 44 images of Australian wildflowers in lino print is a culmination of a lifetime of study in botany, in the mythology, in understanding and, and researching and exploring the language of nature. I'm also a flower reader and it's something that people often of course ask me exactly what is that and, and then the next thing is can I do it too. Flower reading is not a special gift that's been bestowed upon me. It's just something that because of the situation of my youth of being in the Australian not out back, but the Australian bush when I was young and also in the city and having parents that were very connected to the land I became very connected and was able to understand this from a young age and I, it kept with me all of my fine artwork all of the things that I connected to spirituality very much always had something to do with nature I learnt to read flowers at a very young age and then this passion grew within me and I kept looking for more ways and more cultures that did the same and I kept finding the same thing over and over again that there was this thread throughout all cultures and throughout history of people reading flowers. You can read flowers it's just a forgotten art and I hope that through perhaps my deck and through perhaps exploring as well that you too will just reignite this in, etern, internal gift that you do have. These cards uh, are all flowers that I know very well. Um, I'm Australian, I was born here and so these represent uh, a land that I know extremely well and this is why I started off with these cards. I'm going to share with you one of the cards right now just so that we can get a little bit more of an understanding on how flower reading works and because mostly this is a very misunderstood uh, flower itself and this is the Sturt's Desert Pea. This is the emblem of South Australia, a state in Australia. It grows in inland Australia, it actually grows in inland New South Wales and Queensland as well and in the inner desert regions. As you can see from the artwork that I've produced, it does grow in rocky sort of little um, riverbeds and outcrops. That's where it likes to live. The flower itself flowers in, in sort of late winter and early spring and it is a blaze of red. They're only very, very tiny. They're only seven to nine centimetres <laughs> in height and they grow on a prostate which is along the ground uh, plant which is about 30 centimetres overall that it, it spreads. The flower is connected to many Australian Aboriginal uh, peoples. There are a lot of stories and most of the stories connect very much with the energy of the plant and it is about a, a woman who goes on a hunt with her husband and the tribe and he goes missing so she waits by the riverbed for him and this is this is indicated by a red cloak and her face as so she waits for him. The energy surrounding this plant uh, connects us with the energy and this is the same with all plants and flowers. We look at the shape, we look at the environment that it's growing in, we look at the scent of the, fl the flower or the plant, we look at its history as well and these are the things that we find to make up the meaning. It's from this language that people also make flower essences, it's from this language that we also find divination keys and when we combine it with the botanical information which is what I've done in my cards, they all have the botanical information because nature and spirituality and science all, all weave together, they're, they're not separate. When we put those together that's how we get the meanings. So when we look at this plant this is how we get the meanings and this is the actual card from my deck. So there's the artwork there and there's the card and the key word is overcoming. The flower is about grief, it is about being stuck and not wanting to let go. Those things are there. It's stuck in this rocky riverbed this, with this passion it has for something from the past. The, the dark, the black, glossy centre 
it indicates uh, a person to to different people but it also indicates that darkness within that we hold when we we can't let go of something but the glossy if you've seen these these flowers in in real life the glossy parts the shining on that those dark black peas in the center indicate the light that can come from the dark as well so it's a release so it's asking us to release so if we get this as a, a card of the day this is what we're looking at we're looking at what are we holding on to so passionately that we might have learnt something from and we can carry with us we don't need to forget about it but we need to move on we need to look at the positives this is all about the pointing parts the pointing to the above the pointing to below we can expand we can move we can learn from above we can learn from a below and we can follow that shining light out of there we can hold on to that passion still we've got very green leaves here which is about growth hold grounding grounding us holding us onto the ground that's the things that are indicated by the Sturtz Desert Pea. When we look at oracle cards, and I get asked this a lot, are pictures of flowers as good as fresh flowers when I'm reading? Because when you read flowers, those of you who do read flowers and plants, be very aware that each flower looks different. And yes, each flower will have subtle differences when you're providing a reading for someone. If you're familiar at all uh, with reading oracle cards and with tarot cards, a base thing that you get taught from the beginning is to trust your intuition. Now this to me isn't trusting an inner voice and you're not sure is that the voice of above or an angel or a, a being or an entity, it's that inner, inner memory, it's that inner self that understands something about what you're looking at. When you're looking at a picture of a flower, and I have created these from actual flowers, they're not made up, they're flowers that I've seen, they're flowers that I've worked with. So when you're looking at this, your intuition when you're working with them should tap into and will, the more that you are working with them, will tap into the subtleties. So when you're looking at this image on the card, you'll what, what are the things that are coming out more to you? Is it the rocks? Is it the roundness of the rocks and the colours? Does that mean something for this reading at the moment? Is it that glossy centre? Is that really prominent? Is there a lot of darkness and grief around at the moment? We're coming up to the time of moving on because we see that light really strongly when we look at the card this time. So these are the things that your intuition, this is how your intuition works. Your intuition connects with a quality and energetic part of that flower to provide that understanding for you. I hope that gives you a little bit more of an understanding of how flower reading works and how my cards in particular work for you. I'd love to hear more about your explorations and your journeys with the cards as well. So please drop me a line via my website. That would be fantastic. And may nature always bless you with everything you ever need.